glad to be in church tonight. I'm telling you what, um, <clears throat> so we've been having, I guess we could do any Wednesday night we wanted. I guess you are the pastors. But um, <laughs> here in January, we've had the privilege to do the, the first couple Wednesdays. And um, uh, we, we love doing Wednesdays because we feel like it's just, it is, it's a little bit of a different crowd. Um, and just what comes out is just, it's not just like you prepare it. It's like you came ready and then more came out because because of your draw, right? Because of your hunger, you're saying, God, I, I'm, I'm here, teach me, show me, you know, that, that kind of deal. So <clears throat> this past week, we've been um, just sitting down together, laying out the full, full year, and, and we just had a really good conversation. A lot of, like, you know, you, have, you ever have, like, those times you feel like you pretty much just ate the elephant in one bite, like, right? That, that doesn't happen, but, but yet, there's great, great progress. And so um, during this week, uh, coming into Wednesday, you know, she, Pastor Evan was going to teach, and, um, and she sent me a text uh, while she was going to pick up the kids uh, of a podcast, and, I, and one of the things I had had in my heart, and I wrote it down for this next Sunday, not Joseph Morris Sunday, but uh, the next one, right, preceding what we were going to do, uh, a, a following of that would be a series on something, on finances and um, fundamentals, anyway, uh, fundamentals, anyway, all right, um, anyway, and so I wrote down this, this phrase, uh, because there's been a lot of, like, a lot of times there's things going on, you can't put your finger on why, or not even that you can't put your finger on why, but you're battling things, and there's all kinds of things going on, but, but you try to solve it in a way that is absolutely not the way to solve it. Um, you try to address natural things that have something very spiritual behind it. And sometimes we're looking at the natural things in our life, and we're trying to go, why am I down? Or we're looking at it and going, why, why do I feel like I'm so immobilized? Like, why do I, like, have you ever felt like, man, you're just, I mean, you're conquering the world. And like for a year or maybe two years, you feel like such great vision. Then you kind of like come to this place where you were just like, you just can't, you can't even get the engine started. Like, like there's no forward momentum. And yet in your heart, you know how to do that, but yet you can't even figure out how to put, get to step one when you know that there's more to do. So like, there's like this unfruitfulness, unproductive, right? You know, it should work, right? Kind of like having, you know, kids, you know, it should work, but when it's not working, right? If you've ever tried to have a baby, you know, like, you know what you're supposed to do, but it's not working. Everything's working, but something you don't know why. And so you're spinning your wheels and there's something behind it. And I wrote down on, on the calendar, uh, just this message that dropped in my heart real clear. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. Now, have you ever dealt with somebody that behind everything is a spirit, right? You know what I'm talking about? Like Satan, you know, like every, I'm just going to get the devil out of my home. You know, oh, just the devil, the devil. That's why I'm not getting my cheeseburger on time. It's taking five minutes here, you know, the devil, you know, so. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's, it's kind of over, uh, but, it, it, but you understand. It's kind of silly, but yet at the same time, um, the battles, right? Not the cheeseburger battles, but the battles you and I face, um, you, you could say this, it's spiritual. And you can address all the natural things, and you can go to your tired in the face, and you can, in a sense, feel like you made some headway only to just have what's behind it, it's spiritual, just really be letting up a little bit. So you think you got it, right? Yeah. And then he'll come in like a flood and just jack with you all over again. And, and you know, like how the Bible says, um, like when there was a, a, a demonic spirit, when it was cast out, but unless something took its place, it would have been better that had it not been yeah. cast out because now a bunch more are going to take its place, yeah. right, and ruin your life. Yeah. And I think sometimes, and I, I just think just as of late, um, I haven't been as mindful of some of the things of the fact that, guys, you're a spirit being. We teach that. We say that. But the fact of the matter is that if you'll put Ephesians chapter 6, uh, 12, and actually if you can put it up in the TPT, um, and, you know, you've heard this where we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rules of weakness. But you, there's actually a battle going on. Um, and will you um, – go ahead. Oh, you're, yeah. you're a good reader. Okay, it says, your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. And so sometimes we only think when we say we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, we're only thinking about like a fence. 
right? Like, for some reason, somehow, Ephesians chapter 6 has, is, has gotten this context that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Like, in other words, he cut me off. Like, it's only if, it, if they do something to hurt me. But really, when you look at that, he's saying it's not against natural. Natural, that which is just yeah. around us, the living. Uh, it, it, is, it is against, uh, uh, the Bible says, as against principalities, against powers, against rulers of, uh, of darkness. And if you've seen the TPT, I love how it says, it says the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion. So it's not the highest principalities and, and powers in authority. It's those on Satan's side. In other words, the rankings, he's going to put against you the highest, his, his best. He knows the time's short. And so he's putting his best against you, who God said, I'm going to pour out my best in the last days, and I'm going to pour out my spirit in, in my sons and daughters. So what, what he doesn't, what, what, what we carry is the greatest spirit. It's his Holy Spirit, and it's in us, and it's the greatest. It is the A team that every time beats his B team. Every single time. And we got to realize that it is. It is the battle that we are to fight, and it's a battle that we're to fight by our, with, with the Spirit of God, right. all right? And so I don't want to get all like, um, like, ooh, whatever, but at the same time, I, I, or like not, ooh, whatever, um, I don't want to overemphasize, like, you being weird. I want you to be naturally spiritual, because that's what you are, right. and the battle that you're facing, and how you approach it, and how we defeat the things uh, in the Spirit is by the Spirit, and what that looks like, and we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end. But what we have is we have this message. She sent me this, 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 this link, and I clicked on it, opened it, and I started listening to it. And I was like, oh, my Lord, that is exact. She's like, I know, I, I, I got that too. And I was like, can we just move Joseph Morris back? You know, <laughs> can't do that. And teach it on, on Wednesday and Sunday. Like this is one of those ones I, I want you to hear today, but I want you to hear it tomorrow. And then maybe next week, and then next week. And we'll have the link online, and there's a, there's a video, actually, of the same message, but this is a podcast of a message, so it would be like, remember when we had first service, second service? Well, some places they have first, second, and third service. I don't know where this message fa- falls, but all we have for you tonight is an audio recording. Got it? So your, your attention, you might have to close your eyes a little bit. You might have to do whatever. But, but we've listened to it, went through it. We pulled scriptures. So we're going to follow along. And we'll be throwing scriptures up on the screen. And then after that, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be doers of the word, not just hearers only. Right? Okay. Do you have anything you wanted to say in yeah. regards to that? Um, just piggybacking on that. And I really feel like um, this was a message that actually one of my pastor friends had put on Insta Story, And I had just snapped a picture of it. I don't know over a month ago, before the holidays. And it just came to me so strong when I was driving to get the kids from school, just, hey, remember that podcast? Remember that screenshot you took? And I feel like it was really the Holy Spirit because it was such an alive word to us. Um, But I believe for our body too, but I I believe really for the body of Christ because, and I love actually that Joseph Morris is piggybacking this because you just see um, time is short. Time is short. And so like he said, the enemy is like, trying to do everything he can to get believers to quit, to get them to let go, to get us just tired, to get us to just not understand our authority, not understand what we've been given, and just chill, (laughs) in a sense. And so I just believe this will stir you, but also just be able to help us recognize when the enemy comes, how to address it, what to do, and how to recognize those thoughts and those key areas that he um, tries to come in. So I just believe it's really, really timely. I think it's extremely significant. And I'm going to get set up this message. I'm saying setting up his message because I don't know if it was in this one or the other one that was the video that he set it up because one was like an hour and 20 minutes. One was 40 minutes. You're going to listen to the 35-minute one tonight. Um, just because the other part was announcements or whatever. Anyway, Ephes- not Ephesians, but Revelation, right? So if, we, if I was to say the word revelation and I was talking about the books of the Bible, you would maybe you would think of two words, the and, okay? And the Bible says in Revelation that blessed is he that reads this, right, and understands it. And it's so cool that we got Brother Joseph Morris, I mean, uh, just to come teach this coming weekend and, and th- these weekdays on, on along those lines, along with, uh, you know, other parts. But here, this message, it starts, uh, and, and you'll hear him read out of this, Revelation chapter 2. But I'm going to give the context of Revelation 2 and 3, um, which is about the seven churches. 
okay? And the seven churches in the book of Revelation has to do with not just the different churches in the different cities, but the different characteristics of the church and uh, uh, that is often found in the church. And you'll see like the lukewarmness. You'll see uh, things. And he says, you know, man, I've seen your works. There's some really, really great things and, but, and, and more great things than, than this. But I got to have to talk to you about this. Yeah. Right. And so this is what this is about. It's, and I really believe it is. It's because it's where we're at. Where we're we're at the end, yeah. and and at the end, this is what the Satan's going to try to do. He's going to try to turn on what would what would be able to take out the church. Mm -hmm. And historically, how I many of you know if historically Satan could take out men of God, the church, mm -hmm. at the time uh, before Jesus came, he, this spirit took out prophets. Um. And, and, and we're going to talk about Elijah and the spirit and how actually it was able to, the last thing that, he, that, that Eli, Elijah, right, ever did, that, that, like for God, was what, he stopped his ministry after the spirit got, on, got kind of a hold of him, if you will. Now he still carried it, but he didn't go forward with boldness. Mm -hmm. Like he was impaired. There was no longer the fruitfulness or the, yeah. uh, what was the word? Uh, not unfruitfulness, but the, um, Sorry. No. come on, eunuch, um, oh. unfruitfulness or un, well, oh, just unproductive. unproductive. There you go. Eunuch would be unproductive because they're, anyway, um, <laughs> you know. Yeah, he'll he'll talk he'll talk about that for a sec, and um, and and since he's going to talk about that, I want to put a little a little bit in your head concerning a eunuch when he does talk about it on this one because he just talked real short on it, and I did a little study on it. When when he when these eunuchs are mentioned, they are in the tower. Think of Jasmine, Princess Jasmine, or the movie Aladdin when when he gets thrown in one of those things. There's that little window up in the tower. It's one window and a watchtower at the gate of the city. And, and Jezebel is in this tower with some eunuchs, okay? And the reason why these eunuchs had went with her, well, is because you're not going to send just any other guy with this Jezebel to this tower that is trying to meet somebody when they come into the city and seduce them. In other words, it goes on to say that she's painting her eyes and all these kind of things. And it's just really interesting how how significant it was that even the eunuchs were placed, what, like what she was trying to do to this other man of God, which is this the, the, uh, Jezebel spirit, which we, he's going to talk about, tries to seduce or get you to let your guard down or manipulate you, right, and catch you. Where could I catch him? And as this man of God, uh, which is uh, not Elijah, not Elisha, but Jehu, who's been anointed now, he comes riding in the same tricks right? The same tricks that the, that the enemy that defeated Elijah, the same tricks that you'll see that defeated John the Baptist is not going to defeat this man because of the anointing. And I'm telling you, it's so good. It's so, so awesome. So we're going to listen to this about 35 minutes and then we're going to, we're going to add a couple of things at the end. All right. Get ready. Get your notes out. church in Thyatira write, these things says the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass. So this is Jesus on the Isle of Patmos appearing to John and he's giving him direct instructions about the end time. I know your works, your service, your faith, your patience. He's complimenting. He's highlighting the good things they're doing. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Verse 20, nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman, Jezebel, and if you're a woman, relax, it's not that kind of sermon. <laughs> this is not just talking about the character in the Old Testament by the name of Jezebel, Ahab's wife. This is a spirit. This is a spirit. This is 1,800 years after this woman has passed away, and yet Jesus is predicting that the predominant spirit that will come against the church will be 
a spirit. It's neuter gendered. I've seen men operate under the spirit of Jezebel just as much as women. It's not a, it's not a male or female thing. I'll explain that in just a moment. That woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality, to eat things sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality. The, the King James in original text says fornication. And she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. Thank God for that. He said, I'll give a space of uh, uh, to repent. I call it a space of grace. Just because you keep doing something that you know is not right and you keep getting by with it doesn't mean that God's okay with it. You've got a space of grace. Verse 23. This is unbelievable. I will kill her children with death. Who? The, the spirit of Jezebel wants to have children in every new generation, but I will kill her children with death, and the churches shall know that I am he. Listen now, this is so important. Who searches the minds, everybody say the minds, and the hearts. I am he who's searching the minds and the hearts, and I will give every one of you according to your works. I'm preaching this morning a very different topic, but I promise it relates to your life, and it's going to hit you before you leave here right where you need to hear it. This is not bad news. This is good news. But I need to do just some solid teaching for the next few moments. I'm preaching on Jezebel's children because what caught my attention was that verse that said, I'll kill her children. And I just thought that was amazing that Jezebel, a spirit that Jesus is addressing, will try to have children and reproduce itself over and over and over until it completely controls the minds and the hearts of the end time generation. There are seven churches in the book of Revelation, the first three chapters, seven church ages, are seven characteristics. And in each one of those churches, just like this church is different from Saddleback, and Saddleback is different from Mariner's Church, and they all are churches that Jesus is in and walking and moving among, and he compliments some things in every one of those churches. He praises something in every one of those churches. And then he confronts and combats some bad things that are in every one of those churches. In the seven churches. And so when we come to the, to the uh, church of Thyatira, he lists some good things that they were doing and then he says, but I have something against you because you're allowing the Jezebel spirit, it's a spirit of Jezebel in reference to a woman who lived 1,800 years ago in 1 Kings 18, 1 Kings 19. Jesus appears on the island and he says, the same spirit that was on that woman and caused her to do what she did is operating big in this end time church. It's the predominant spirit that's coming to wipe out a generation. And Jesus warns. And he says even though she's been dead 1800 years, her spirit is very much alive in a new generation and she has children. Children meaning they're small. They start small. They start little. They start in embryonic stage. And they want to control. Did you catch it in my text? I, I, I need you to see that one more time. Guys, throw up verse 23 of Revelation uh, where he said, I will kill her children. And then he goes on and says, and, and it has to do, I search the mind and the heart. So what, what I'm saying is this. It starts out as small thing, an embryonic stage, the mind. And if you feed it, if you shelter it, if you keep taking in the uncleanness, if you keep taking in what the spirit of Jezebel is broadcasting and sending the signal out, and you take it in, it grows. Just like a child, if you feed it, if you shelter it, if you nurture it, it grows. It gets bigger and bigger until it controls the mind, it controls the heart, and it turns you away from God. But it starts as a small thing. Don't allow 
them to dominate your mind and your heart. Jesus was warning the end time church that the enemy would try to oppress the minds. And if he can oppress the minds and control the thinking, then he can turn the heart away from God. Jezebel's children will be the spirit that will attack families, marriages, men, women, young people, children. A spirit that has certain characteristics that this woman in 1 Kings 18 and 19 that lived 1,800 years ago, Jesus said, the same characteristics that you see in her is what will begin to manifest and broadcast signals that will begin to dominate people's lives. What were they? Well, first of all, we know that Jezebel in the Old Testament, the wife of King Ahab, the king of Israel, she began to manipulate him. She began to use him and use her influence over him to completely turn his heart away from God. We preach a lot about Ahab, but Ahab at one time totally loved God, but she began to broadcast a signal and influence over him and one of the things that the spirit of Jezebel is about strongly is manipulation. There's a difference between manipulation and motivation. Motivation is for our good, but manipulation is for my good. Jezebel tried to manipulate leadership for her good, and she was very, very successful at it. Secondly, we see that the spirit of Jezebel manifests itself according to the book of Revelation, and we see it in the Old Testament. Jezebel was exceedingly sexually immoral. Listen to me carefully. She was a married woman with an unmarried spirit. And there's a lot of people today who are being affected by the spirit of Jezebel, and they don't even know it. They're married, but they have an unmarried spirit. They, they have a non-commitment, a non-covenant um, spirit concerning their walk with God. They come to church, they say, I'm part of the church, I'm married, but I have an unmarried spirit. I'm really not going to get involved in anything, it's not going to really alter my life. And many people treat the Lord that way. And so... She was a married woman with an unmarried spirit, meaning she was a seducer. She was sexually immoral. She was unfaithful. She had the attitude, I don't have to keep my marriage vows. I don't have to be faithful. And, 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 and Jesus said, I gave her a space to repent of her fornication. The word fornication comes from the Greek word pornea, from which we get the word pornography. Now, this is astounding. I want you to listen to me carefully. Jesus Christ himself appeared to John and he said, I'm going to tell you the dominant spirit that's coming after the minds and the hearts of the end time generation. I'm going to be so specific that I'm going to name it. Number one, it's Jezebel, but the way Jezebel will reach the minds and hearts of a generation is through pornography. This was before technology. This was before internet. This was before online. This was before all the things that we're seeing now that are coming like a sewer. The Bible talks about in Revelation chapter 13 that the serpent in the end times will open his mouth and there will spew forth a flood, a flood of filth, a flood of illicit uh, of filth and, and lyrics and and pictures and whatever and it will be a flood of filth the serpent I believe we're living in that hour when never before I'm 57 years old and things when I was a kid growing up were kept you know you had to really work hard to sin you really had to come up with some plans and know somebody and have some shady friends nowadays it's everywhere everything anything everything right at the click I gave her a space to repent of her fornication, pornania, pornography, but she would not. Jesus said, I'm going to name it. And it's, notice, it's so, the word of God is so amazing. that it's, He said, this spirit's number one goal is to get the reins of the mind and the heart and turn it away from God. The Jezebel spirit, interestingly, runs concurrent with the spirit of Elijah. Because when Jezebel was doing her thing, 
Elijah comes along, the great prophet Elijah. And there is a prophecy in Malachi that said, in the end time, just as the spirit of Jezebel is reborn and has children, and that thing begins to take over a whole culture and society, at the same time the spirit of Jezebel is coming on the world and the society and the culture, the spirit of Elijah is going to come on the church. The spirit of Elijah that called down fire from heaven. And ours may not be physical fire, but we're going to call down the fire of the Holy Spirit in these days. What was, what was Elijah like? He was a man of passion, the Bible said. He was a man of prayer. His prayers could change nature. His prayers could cause the rain to come. His prayers could cause poison stew to be edible. He had power in his prayer. And the spirit of Jezebel is a spirit that hates prayer. The Bible said in 1 Kings 18 that one of the things she did was she tore down the altars in the temple and did not want prayer anymore, forbid the prophets to pray. And when they didn't obey her, she killed them all except for a hundred. And when she couldn't find the hundred that were hiding in a cave, the Bible said she slew their children and their wives. Jezebel's a spirit that says, if I can't get the prophet, I won't stop there. I'm going to put a target on his children. I'm going to put a target on his wife. I hate the man of God. I hate the anointing of God. And that's why we better pray for our leaders. That's why we better not play church. But we better realize our number one weapon against the spirit of Jezebel is intercessors, people who pray, a church that prays. And, and it's not natural things that are tearing your altar down. And I, look, I'm not here to preach. It's bad news, this is good news, but sometimes you don't just need to be blessed, you need to be blistered. And every once in a while you need your toes to bleed when you leave church. And if you're not praying, I got news for you. There's a dominant spirit that's broadcasting signals. Lust, manipulation. Gotta pray. Jezebel tore down the altars. Just like a radio tower puts out signals, invisible, that you can't see, Jesus said the predominant signal that will be broadcasting will be the spirit of Jezebel. And here's what I want you to get now. This is where I've been trying to hurry up and get to because this is where it affects you. When Jezebel heard what Elijah had done because he called down fire, he then slew 450 prophets of Baal. He brought revival to Israel, and she was enraged. Listen to this. Now let's just go to the text, 1 Kings 19 and verse 2. She sends a letter to the prophet. Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more so, if I do... Listen, listen to her, talking to the guy who just performed the miracle on Mount Carmel and slew the prophets of Baal. May God do, do to me if I do not make your life as the life of them that, that you have slain by tomorrow about this time. 24 hours. In other words, she put out, here this guy is, he's just had the greatest victory of his life. Notice what the signal is broadcasting. Fear. Fear. The spirit of Jezebel is putting fear out. I'm not talking about natural fear. I'm not talking about normal fear. I'm talking about an unusual spirit of fear that Timothy talks about. He's not giving you the spirit of fear. It's a fear of terror, a fear of bad things, a fear of panic, a, a panic, a, a fear of, 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 of I'm going to be, oh, this is going to happen, and that's going to happen, and anxiety and fear, tormenting fear. Tormenting fear is being, is being sent out, signaled like a broadcast going out. And any time Jezebel wants to do something, notice one of her, she has four of these weapons. The number one that she uses on Elijah is fear. A guy who just... Stood and caught, laughed at them, made fun when they made their altars, the prophets of Baal. He said, did your God go have to, did he have to go use the bathroom? Why is he not sending fire? He was making fun, having a good time. Now the same guy cripples under a spirit of fear. This is not normal fear. This is terror. This is, this is panic. The next verse says that he ran away to the wilderness 
quickly. The next verse says that he ran away. Verse 3, quickly guys, come on. And he saw and he arose and ran for his life. Next verse. And when he ran from his life, he said he went to the wilderness, sat under a tree and prayed, listen to this, that he might die and said, it is enough. Now take my life for I am no better than my father's. Look up here. Here's what the spirit of Jezebel is sending out signals and broadcasting to this generation. Number one, fear. Number two, great discouragement. I feel like quitting. What's the use? Oh, I just give up. Do you see, Elijah? Do you see what's happened? What, what has changed from one chapter, victory in chapter 18, to the first three verses of a new chapter, he's encountering the spirit of Jezebel and she brings fear and she brings discouragement. Thirdly, she brings depression. Such severe depression that you sit alone under a tree and pray that God will take your life. Just let me die. Boy, I wrestled for somebody over this sermon because somebody has been sitting in the darkness of your life alone and Jezebel has been signaling fear, panic, discouragement. What's the use? Nothing's going to change. Depression. Just take your life. Just end it. Just let me die. Who cares? And others, if he can't get you with those three emotional holes in your soul, then he comes with lust. And when the enemy brings lust... It's, it, sin is good for a season, but with lust comes fear, comes discouragement, and comes depression. So when you invite the lust in, you bring the fear, you bring the discouragement, and you bring the depression. It's coming whether you want it to or not if you're letting the other in. And those four things, lust, fear, discouragement, depression... How does he do it? He wants to control the mind and the heart and turn it away from God. And I am talking to people right now under the sound of my voice and it's as though the Holy Spirit has put his finger on your heart. And he's saying to you, you're not fighting. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is not just a hard time because you've been through a lot or something has happened. You got laid off or whatever happened. And now sometimes you are actually picking up the signals of the end time spirit. The predominant spirit of Jezebel is lust, discouragement, depression, and fear. There are people in this room. Let me, let me show you something astonishing to me. To show you how Jezebel reproduces children in new generations, you have to go to the New Testament. Come out about 16, actually about 1800 years forward from the Old Testament. And in Luke 1, 17, the Bible said John the Baptist came. Watch this in the spirit and power of Elijah. He's the forerunner of Jesus Christ, but the anointing, the spirit of Elijah. Why? Because he was about to confront a Jezebel spirit, even though she is dead 1,800 years ago. Her spirit was very much alive. And watch what this spirit of Elijah does. It confronts, it calls, calls, tells Herod, it's not right for you to be married to your brother's wife. You killed your brother and, and took his wife, and now you're in adultery. And it's not right. And his wife, Herod's wife, got mad. Watch the spirit of Jezebel, manipulation. And she turns to him, and I can't prove it, but she probably said, you're not coming in the bedroom again until he's in a jail cell. For what he embarrassed us today in public. And so, y'all with me? So Herod has him arrested and puts him in the dungeon. Watch the spirit now. And John's in prison. Jezebel sending signals of fear, discouragement. 
John gets so discouraged in prison that he sends one of, the, one of his disciples to Jesus who's out performing miracles. And he says, does he know that his cousin, me, for, you know, John, I'm his cousin. Does he know that I'm in prison? And Jesus said, you tell him the blind see and the lame walk and the dead are raised and I'll catch him later. Watch signals, depression, discouragement, fear. Watch lust go to work now. Stay with me. Watch this. The Bible said in the book of Mark chapter 6 that it was Herod's birthday. John's locked up in prison and his wife decides to throw a wild party. The wine is flowing like a river. And for the last thing of entertainment, this wicked woman who has the spirit of the enemy on her turns to her daughter and says, go dance, a lewd, sensual dance. Your Bible said in Mark 6, she Can goes out it? and she starts I wanna, I wanna dancing. Interrupt here. And the daughter... Just pause and go back. Just you can skip back 50, uh, maybe even 30, 40 seconds. Can you put up Mark, um, the piece of Mark? So you right after Ephesians 12. And I want you to see this is really important because um, you'll see that what he was talking about, he was actually basically quoting from Scripture in the story about John the Baptist when he, was, he wasn't beheaded, but he was thrown in prison, okay? And now we know that we, we heard this, that John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah, okay? We're talking Elijah destroy, I mean, he called fire down from heaven, right? Like, and this is who John the Baptist came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. But in Matthew chapter 11, uh, 11 says, that, and it says this, it says that, that John the Baptist was more powerful or more or greater than all the prophets ever. And then it goes on to say, yet anyone that's the least in the kingdom of God is greater than him. Why? Because the, the spirit of God lives inside of them. Okay. So this is really, just really, really interesting that John in the spirit of Jezebel is wor at work. It's released at the same time. You see that Elijah and Jezebel are alive and same still in the end time church. He's releasing the spirit of, uh, of Jezebel on the church. It's, we see that in Revelation. But at the same time, he's going to send in Malachi chapter 5. It tells us 6, 5 and 6, or 4 and 5. Excuse me. You want me to read it? Malachi chapter 4. Yeah. Five and six, there you go. That's a dyslexia. <laughs> um, but behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes, and he shall turn and reconcile the hearts to the children. And this is what we just read, actually, with John the Baptist actually coming, again, preceding when Jesus, when Jesus came. But so, so here he is, John the Baptist, filled with the power of God, filled with the power of Elijah. And what happens is, is like he said, it's, it's, it's the, the demonic assignments, rulers of the heavenly places. And the way he described it would be like, like a, a radio signal broadcasting out to what? The hearts and the minds. Okay, because this is what he's after. He's after the hearts and the minds so he can, can defeat you, right, and turn you away, right, from, from, the, from the Lord. And so here's John the Baptist filled, just like the church is today filled, okay? But what happens is here he is, he's gotten cast into prison because he stood up and he actually said in Mark, he said, hey, Herod, you're with your brother's wife and that's not okay, and, and actually, Herod had already, if you, if you read, Herod uh, had heard John preach, and he repented. He actually, he actually was like, you know, and so then now he's calling him out and said, hey, bud, that's not, that's not the way that you turned. And she's upset about it, right? And so she, he, he says, I can't say that this is exactly what happened. You're not coming to bed with me unless, you know, you get rid of him. So he had him thrown in jail. Right. So here he is now in jail. And then this is I wanted to hit on this part because this is really, really important. Instead of fighting. Instead of fighting John the Baptist, John, he could have fought, but instead he was seduced in the mind, in the heart. He received all these thoughts and he was like began to be depressed and compare himself with another. His name was Jesus. You remember that? And he said, well, well, and he says, go, go find out about Jesus. Tell him, I'm, uh, tell him how bad I am or tell how poor of a state I am. He begins to get depressed. He begins to think, woe is me and all these kind of things. And so he's not fighting. 
and he's not fighting. And Jesus says, listen, everything that you fought for, let me come and give you a word of encouragement, not a slap in the face. Where all of us, a lot of us were like, ah, yeah, the blame block, the blind. Blah, blah. He came to prepare the way of the Lord. And it finally happened when Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, set the captive free. All of his life, they were born in tandem, basically. Right, just, just a little bit before, but basically in tandem. And for 30 years, John the Baptist was a voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. And, and, and Jesus hadn't been able to, to, to do what he was sent to do until, until the Spirit of God rested upon him, not just in him, so he could be the witness, set the captive free, cause the lame to walk, all this kind of stuff. And John the Baptist is in, is in prison. And the, what he sends back to him is this, the lame walk, the blind see. The deaf here, not like deuces, I'm, I'm out, sorry bud, no that wasn't that, that was what you fought for, listen, listen, what you fought for, there, it wasn't just a fight, that, your faith didn't just fight, your faith won. Your faith, what you, what you preached won. There's victory in, in your word. There's victory in your prayer. There's victory in what you've been crying for all along. There's victory. Don't lay down on me now. Don't, don't stop fighting now. And it goes on. And go to the, I want you to put, a, put a, I want to follow along with where he's at. We'll pick back up. And we're in, he's not giving you the references. He's just reading out of it. So that's why I left my computer up there discouragement, fear. Watch lust go to work now. Stay with me. Watch this. The Bible said in the book of Mark chapter 6 that it was Herod's birthday. John's locked up in prison and his wife decides to throw a wild party. The wine is flowing like a river. And for the last thing of entertainment, this wicked woman who has the spirit of the enemy on her turns to her daughter and says go dance a lewd sensual dance your bible said in mark 6 she goes out and she starts dancing and the daughter danced and pleased herod and those who sat with him i don't know what move she was doing I don't know what in the world, how it had to be, it had to be vulgar, it had to be unbelievably sensual, because when it was over, Herod said, give her half the kingdom. If you read the next verse, he said, what do you want from me? I'll give it to you up to half the kingdom. Watch the spirit. She says, let me go ask my mother. And she goes in a back room and says, should I ask for a Mercedes-Benz chariot? What, what, what should, I, should I ask for a palace on the, on the beach? What, what, I, I mean, half the kingdom, there's no price tag here. We can have anything we want, mother. And watch the spirit of Jezebel possess her. And she says, I don't want any of that. I want that prophet's head on a platter. And the children, and they got it, the children overcame the prophetic. But that spirit had children in a new generation. The thing that's interesting is Ahab loved to hear Elijah preach. And your Bible said that Herod loved to hear John preach. Because when they said, we want his head on a platter to Herod, the Bible said he was exceedingly sorrowful. For he loved John and he loved to hear him preach and he wanted and he, he was exceedingly sorrowful. The spirit of Jezebel will come on people in the end time church and they will enjoy good preaching but they have made up their mind I'm not going to change. And the way that you know the spirit of Jezebel is working is you can hear a preacher preach plain and be pricked in your heart and feel conviction and enjoy a spark of life. I really believe that when Herod was feeling low after the party and the, and the things were wearing off and he was empty and he had it all but he had nothing, he would go down and sit in that prison and say, John, tell me a Bible story. Tell me, preach to me. And he'd feel a spark of life. Your Bible says that Elijah preached to Herod and he repented to him. But he would go back and get under that broadcast signal of Jezebel. 
mind, heart turned away from God. I enjoy good preaching, but I'm not going to change. That's a dangerous, dangerous thing. This spirit brings lust, fear, discouragement, depression. We're seeing suicides, opioids, depression, even, even movie producers, script writers are being manipulated by powerful spirits. They have no idea. They are not aware of the unseen things that are going on. But all you got to do is open your eyes tonight. I'm going to show you something in Scripture that, that so speaks to what we've just seen as a nation happen in El Paso and all these things. It's right in the Bible. It's going to kill. It's going to steal. It's going to destroy well, what's the answer? Do we just not have internet? No, no, no. I'm not preaching against technology. I'm preaching this. Sometimes you have to have, you have, to have access without entry. Why did God put both trees, the knowledge of good and evil, in the garden? Why didn't he take the, the knowledge of evil tree and put it behind a barbed wire fence? That way they couldn't have got to it. Because sometimes God wants there to be a choice that is made by you that I have access but not entry. In other words, sometimes the only thing that you have is your personal convictions and your personal conscience that says my mind and my heart does not need to be looking or my, my, having my mind set on this. I need it to be set on the Lord. And it's a choice. And it's accountability. And it's being pure. And real and honest and saying, I'm struggling. I'm struggling in my mind. My heart is being turned away. I see the enemy trying with all that he has through lust, through fear, through discouragement, through depression. And when you feel that, be honest. And kill it while it's a baby. Because if you feed it and you shelter it, and you nurture it, it grows, and it grows, and it grows, and it has a grip on your mind and your heart, and it destroys. Secrecy breeds sin. Don't ever forget that. If you don't get nothing else out of this sermon, that might save your life. Secrecy breeds sin. When you're secretly doing things that you know are evil and wrong, it breeds sin. So what do we do? I've got three minutes. Can I preach three more minutes? So what do we do? If Jezebel hates authority, we are to reinforce authority. We are to teach our children to, as they go back to school, you show respect to your teachers. You say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. You show respect to your coaches. You show respect to police officers. You show respect to people in authority. You show respect to elders and parents. Even if you don't agree with them, you reinforce authority. If you're going to get over what God has said under you, you got to get under what God puts over you. And all of us are to submit to authority. And if you can't honor the person, honor the office. Because God said, it's like you're doing it to me. So here's how the story ends with Jezebel. In 2 Kings chapter 9, there is a man, Elijah goes up in a fiery chariot. Elisha comes along and he does double the miracles. And then he's ready to pass the baton and he goes to a guy by the name of Jehu. And he pours a box of oil on him. And he says, the Lord said, go to the city. And confront Jezebel. Now I want you to see this. He goes to the city. And the Bible said Jezebel was up in her palace. And she stepped out on the balcony. And she was painting her face. And braiding her hair. And up rides this preacher on a horse. He's dripping with the anointing. He's a young voice. He's a new generation. 
Praise God. There's going to be a new generation. If, if, there's, if there's a heavy attack of the spirit of Jezebel, there's going to be a new generation that's going to come under the anointing of the spirit of Elijah. And he rides right up, and he sees her up there. And she starts broadcasting. I'm sure she looked at him. She might have had one of those biblical dresses, lo and behold. She probably bent over and tried to, let's see if the signal of lust can get this preacher boy. But he's sanctified. He's set apart. He's called and consecrated. He says, I'm not receiving that. My mind, my heart belongs to Jesus. So she probably calls for her army to surround him. Fear tries to come. But he's freshly anointed. And the anointing, Isaiah 10, breaks, said, Isaiah 10 said, the anointing breaks the yoke. <laughs> All you got to do to get free from any of this is get under an anointing. The anointing breaks the yoke. Right here, right now, I feel the anointing. Well, that sounds like a mighty powerful spirit, preacher. Nah. You ought to see what's in you and in me. The Holy Spirit is more powerful than any Jezebel spirit can anything it can produce. She tries to send out the signal on the broadcast of lust. It doesn't work. She sends, and by the way, it's not like you ever reach a place in your walk that you are not tempted and that you're not normal. I can't stand fakey Christians. Yes, I've been sanctified, and I never ever think about any. You are a liar. That's what you are. You need to, You might have got free from something else. Now you picked up a lying spirit. It's stupid to pray not to be tempted. What a dumb prayer. He didn't say don't pray that you're tempted. That's not a biblical prayer. Jesus said pray that you enter not into temptation. Many times when I pray, I pray the prayer of Jabez. Uh, you know, uh, bless me indeed. And enlarge my territory, let your hand be on me. But the biggest part, keep me from evil. Keep me from evil. I store up prayers that when, when, a, when an hour of temptation, or t the thing about temptation is it comes in seasons. And there's the hour of testing. When right before something big, the enemy senses and he will send temptation. But if you store up prayer, remember the spirit of Elijah is a spirit of prayer. And if you store up prayer, there will be a strength that will come to you. And the mind and the heart will not be turned away. It will stay after God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I would not sin against thee. Now watch this. Surrounding Jezebel were three eunuchs. A eunuch was men, servants who had been castrated by the king so he could feel confident they wouldn't flirt with his bride. I don't know any other way to say it. That is exactly what they were. Notice that surrounding the spirit of Jezebel, listen carefully, surrounding the spirit of Jezebel is a non-productive spirit. Stuff that you used to could do and you could produce. If you start hanging out with that spirit of porn, that spirit of lust, that spirit of fear, discouragement, and depression, suddenly the productivity, the reproducing of success, the things that you used to do, it dries it up. There's a non productive anti revival spirit all around her because anybody who gets close to her loses revival and loses the ability to be productive. It's a matter of time. He gives you a space to repent. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Jehu looked up with a fresh anointing. And she was sending her greatest signals, but it could not pierce the anointing that was on him. And he said, is there anybody up there on the Lord's side? And all of a sudden, those three eunuchs said, I've about had enough of this. And he said, watch this, throw her out the window, throw her down, 
and they threw her down and some of her blood splattered on the wall and on the horses. Watch! And he trampled her under foot. I'm saying to the spirit of lust, the spirit of fear, the spirit of discouragement, the spirit of depression and suicide and quitting and giving up and bondage and addiction and secrecy and shame. We are going to... Kill it, that was the time. <clears throat> um, all those things, and we, we felt so strong that just um, yielding and just realizing that the, the battle that you're in is spiritual. The battle that you're in Put those four things back up there, if you don't mind. Those battles are spiritual. And even, even coming to church, we know it's spiritual, but did you know, like he said, how you can come and you can get that feel good? The same way you could get a feel good on Facebook or a feel good. You can come into church and hear a good message of hope, of good news, and, and yet be, be of that un- what, what, what was that like the, 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 the heart that's un, unyielded or untogether like unmarried heart like as the bride of Christ that's what happens when you get born again you, you're his bride and so you're married and so it, when I get married that's, that no longer is it me and these other girls it's just it's me and her it's me and Jesus but a lot of times we just we come and we'll listen to good, the good news and we will have an un, and I'm going to say this word that you might think it's a dirty word, repent in heart. We think repent is, is something bad. It's the thing that's not teached enough. And that means to turn to change, to, to when you see something, when you see the small embryonic, small stage where in the mind and in the heart, right? Guard your heart with all diligence. The Bible tells us to guard our hearts, to guard our minds. What, what are the, what, what's the gateways to our heart? Our eyes and our ears. And Jezebel's all over the TV. You can't, even, you can't watch any game you can't, without, without that being a part of it. Trying to present something. Trying to, what, plant a seed of lust, of fear, of discouragement, of 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 depression, and we we when we take that thought, we can either we can either think on that, and I love that access without entry. Did you know a lot? You know everything can be hitting the fan in your life right now. Dark stuff, and you can choose to access thinking on that, or you can say, "I have access." but I'm not going there. Instead, I'm going to offer a sacrifice of praise. Access without entry. You, you, all of us, we can, we can, we, this is, this is, I had written this, access without entry. Having that right there, it just exposes our choice. Access simply exposes that which is of the heart. So, you know, and I'm not saying just give your kids and, and give you, you know, to, to, to where, you know, they can have access to anything and just, you know, let them slit their throats. Here's some poison, drink it, you know. You know, it, understand, you, you, you set a guard, but at the end of the day, access is, like he said, a click away for everything, a thought away. All access it does is it exposes your mind and your heart. When you, when you click or when you when you choose to think on, and so I, I think that's such a powerful that's a, such a powerful phrase. I have access, but I'm not going in. Why? Because greater is He that's in me than, than than any spirit that's in this world, than any what what He in, in this, you can't. And I'm not going to throw everything at Je, as Jezebel. He just said these are the signals that the, the, the same spirit, the demonic assignments, heavenly signals, heavenly assignments, principalities, powers, rulers of the heavenlies that are saying and pro- proclaiming to you, you should just die. Why don't you just die? And you just came off of a big win. Just You should just die. You should just quit. The same spirit is the same spirit of unproductivity. No longer productive can't figure out how to produce 
what you know you are supposed to and created to produce. There's dreams and callings in this house tonight that, that have been operating under an unproductive spirit been yielded to, have been accessing, and you can say accessing thoughts of depression. You can say accessing uh, what would be fornication or pornonia, which is that Greek word, or pornography. Amazing. I don't know. 1,800, 2,000 years ago, over 2,000 years ago, he said it's going to be the spirit of Jezebel and it's going to be pornography. It's going to get in people's hearts and minds, and what it'll do is it'll take them from their hearts, from their children. Put up... Um, Put up the beginning of Luke where it says, I'll turn their minds and hearts, or the Malachi one. It might be easier for to find, Malachi 4. And it says, I'll turn their hearts to the children. Did you know what's so crazy? What used to be everything to a father was his child. This is my lineage. This is, was the pride and joy. This is why they had so many wives. Not because sex was so great, which sex was great, but it was for their children, that they'd have these children. What was written down and passed down and written down is this one and this child and this child and this child. These are my children. But you know what's crazy is how pornography will take a dad right out of the picture of the home and rip them from their children's hearts and rip their children's hearts right out of them. Don't believe me? Sit down in front of a computer. Like you do in your privacy. And let, instead of being in your secrecy where you're allowing sin to breed, open the door and say, kids, come watch what daddy's doing. And you tell me if it doesn't rip their heart out. And this is not something to be down on you. This is something, guys, Satan is having his rule in your life. And with it comes depression. With it comes fear. With it comes discouragement. You know, like the greatest discouragement is so horrible because no longer do you have the, the courage to face and do what you were created to do. You can't even confront. You can't, you tolerate. We tolerate. God confronts. That's what you see all in Revelation chapter through the seven churches. God confronts. We tolerate. And he said this to that church. He said, I have this against you. You've tolerated. And the passion says, you've tolerated and you're forgiving that spirit. You're not just forgive the spirit of sin. That's not even your job. He said, you, I, you've tolerated and you're forgiving that spirit. You're allowing it to rule and reign in, in the place and the very people, the very gifts that the, the God with all of his heart wants more than anything is for you to fulfill the purpose for which he created you. With, like as a father, he's like, oh God. And, and, and you see that, put it back up, uh, Malachi. And the spirit of Elijah It'll defeat those things. It'll turn the hearts of the father, not to a woman, not to some other thing to get something else, something like I got to have something more, but back to the children, back to pouring into the children, the hearts of the parents to their children. I'm saying parents because let's just, I, I don't, I, I can't comprehend it, but, but, but this is the, the stats that it, it's almost, almost as much pornography is in the, with the females today as it is with the males. I think this has to do with the, the equality and the push of Satan and, and no identity and not knowing who you are and what, you, what God created you to be and in and, and this twist because you're not equal to a man but you are just as valued. You're not equal as in the same. We're different but we're just as valuable, just as priceless, just as I need, I need her to be a, a, a woman and I need, I, need to be, I need her to want me to be a man. And he goes on and says, and turns the parents. This is the spirit of Elijah. Go, uh, go back one verse. And I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the great and de dead, like before the end. Like before, like, wow. Fearful day, one, uh, tra translation is like, wow. I'm going to send you the spirit. Like back in the churches. Back in the churches where Jesus said, hey, I'm operating in this spirit. It's upon me. Like the mantle is upon me. When he tells John the Baptist, he says, it's about me. And, and he goes to this next verse. And I'll turn their hearts of the parents to the children and hearts of the children to their parents. That's, a, that's awesome. We're not see the, the same way when dad turns, kids turn. When, when, listen, when dad turns, when mom turns, kids turn. 
Same way. Well, I just wish my kids would just turn your hearts to them. Let go of the lust. Oh, I, I just, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. You can't just try. What do you do? You cry out to God for help. When, 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 you, when you send something, you be honest with the Lord. It, it's just, you talk with Him. What did Jezebel tear down? The altar. Why? Because if you were to define altar, the definition of altar is simply a meeting place with the spirit realm. The altar. You know there's altars, dem- satanic altars. There's all kinds of altars. But the altar, an altar is simply a meeting place. Where are you to meet with God? Where does he meet with you? In prayer. Where is it? Is, is prayer just, just here? I'm talking about taking the altars out of the churches. I'm talking about taking the altar, in a sense, out of your heart. Where no longer are you yielded to, to the altar of your heart when God says, and you hear a message, and he says, sacrifice that to me. You hear a good word? You hear a good word? He says, Sacrifice that to me. Lay that down. Lay that down. Turn from that. Repent. We go. Man, that was a good word today. We just keep on going. We don't. We don't enter that conversation. We don't cry out and say, "God, I've tried. I need your help, God. I'm willing. God, I'm willing. God, I'm willing." God, I'm like just being honest with him instead of just hiding, walking out the door and hiding it again and continuing out the way. He's trying, Satan wants to tear you from the meeting place where you would meet with him because if you don't sacrifice it to the Lord, what will happen is the accuser will come, guaranteed, and he'll say, hey, hey, you didn't sacrifice, you, you didn't give that to the Lord. You're, he'll talk to you about that, and you know what you won't do? You won't talk to him. And you'll go through the week without, without entering in the conversations that you're supposed to have and being led by him because, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just not. And what happens is, is the altar's tore down, and the altar's tore down, and the altar's tore down. And, and, and he, Jezebel tore down not just the altars, but she killed the prophets of God. Over a hundred prophets, or all, all but, but a hundred. And when they went to look for her, the, those prophets, she couldn't find those hundred prophets because they were hiding in the mountains. And she said, kill their children. Kill their children and their wives. Because guess what? If, if Jezebel can't get the, the man of God, he's going to try to go for their wives and their children. Listen, I'm talking to you, man and women of God. If he can't get you and you're doing pretty good, guess what? He's coming after your children and he's coming after your wives. Should you be scared? No. What you should do is you should put out a different signal. And you should say, not here. And you, we should fight back. And we should fight back the same way that God fought, fought back. And it's the way we see that he fought back. How did he fight back? Put up uh, first, uh, Kings 9, 4 through 13. I want us to see this because sometimes we have to explain, and I'm talking to myself here, we have to explain and I, and I, I'm talking for myself here. I feel like oftentimes because of fear of man, I explain what's going on in my heart rather than just moving on what goes on in my heart. And you know what? Sometimes we need to move what's on our heart instead of disowning that or, or pushing it down and move on it and, 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 and follow the leading of the Lord and, and stick with the Spirit of God and here's what happens. I want you to see this. So the young man, this is Jehu. This young man, this is just amazing, this, this whole passage right here. It says this. It says, the young man, the servant of the prophet, went uh, to, to Ramoth Gilead. And when he arrived, there was the captains of the army sitting. And he said, I have a message for you. So there's this young man, which is Elisha's servant. And he comes in and he says, hey, I, uh, whoever's the commander here, I have a message for you. And he says, for who? He says, I have a message for you, Commander uh, Jehu. And, and then he arose, and Jehu went with this young man into the house where Elisha was. And, and, and it says, and he poured the oil on his head and said to him. Now, I'm going to do something that I had seen, of my, seen myself doing. I didn't know what I, I saw it on a table, but I'm going to do it. Okay? Will you hold this? This is oil. It's 
so here's what he did. He took the oil and he did this. No, he took the oil and he poured the oil out. And I asked him, oh, did I get it on the carpet? Is that sad? We're so worried about where we get the oil. Like, I want to just go, shh, not onto you, but just be thinking the Holy Spirit. We're so afraid of where we put the oil. It might get on your clothes. Can you get that out? I sure hope not. I sure hope not. We're so afraid of where we put the oil. The oil all through the word is representative of the Spirit of God. The, the anointing, the Bible says in Isaiah 10, it's the very thing that breaks the what? The yoke. How many people in here under the yoke of slavery or Isaiah 58 where it says, is this not the fast that I've chosen to break the bonds, to loose the bonds of many things and to destroy the yoke? This fast simply means this, this separation. The fast, separating from this to this. Because there's something about a separation. The anointing oil was simply to separate somebody unto a ministry. To separate themselves from the yoke uh, or that which was holding them and separate them. The oil, the, the spirit of God. Is this not the fast? Is this the, the anointing oil? The oil? I'm not saying that this is the oil. I'm saying the spirit of God is the oil. And we need to not be so afraid to where he's at. He, here's, here's, I, I don't want any yokes on me. children if it can't get me. They're not coming for my, ki- my children because I put the, I believe the blood of Jesus over my house. And I lose that thing around my place. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you live and dwell in my place. And I just anoint my stuff with some oil as a representation that this is God's house. It's saying you can't come here. And I can be bold by bold with the oil. Careful with the oil. Get the oil out. Get the oil out. Let's pour it on. It talks about how it was poured down in a river up here. Now listen to this. And he poured the oil on his head, and he said unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed you. I have set you apart. I have set you apart. I have anointed you to be king over the people of the Lord of Israel. And you shall strike down the house of Ahab, your master, that I may avenge my blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. It's interesting. Destroying people, destroying the servants of God. What are you? Do you feel like Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy? We see this all about. Let's go on to the next verse. For the whole house of Ahab shall, shall perish, and I will cut off from all, all the males of Israel, both bond and free. So I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, son of uh, Nabat, and like the house of Basha, son of, uh, yeah. The dog, it says, the dog shall eat, um, eat Jezebel on the plot of ground at Jezreel. And there shall be none to bury her. And he opened up the door, and he ran out. <laughs> he opened up the door, and he ran out. Now listen what is said next. Then Judah, uh, Jehu came out uh, to the servants of his master. And, and one uh, said to him, is, is everything okay? Hey, what's that all about? Is everything good? And, and what, why did this madman come to you? King James says this maniac. Madman. Those crazy people. Those faith, crazy faith people. Are you one of those crazy maniac faith people? Like, listen what's said. Those, those crazy maniac faith people. What, is everything okay? What a weirdo. What a psychopath. Just here. Just care, careful where you put the oil. 
This is what he's, this is what's going on. Listen, this maniac, madman come to you. And he said to them, You know, you all, you know the man and his babble. Oh, you know, you know, we're making excuses for God because he needs them. We, we're making some excuses. We're explaining how God communicates to your heart. We're explaining our actions. We're explaining the works of the Spirit of God because, well, he needs defense after all. I mean, he is just the King of kings and the Lord of lords that every knee will bow. But just for now, I want you to know that he's actually pretty good. Really, I'm defending myself because I'm afraid of you, not afraid. Or my fear is more of you than it is of God. It's, it's you know, he, you know him and his bat. You know, hey. They're just, you know, they didn't really mean what they said. Name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. You know, that group. There's power in your words. You know, I mean, really you don't have to watch over that. I mean, just, you know, it's okay. I mean, I mean, really, we are, it's the 22nd century, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, everybody's doing it. I mean, like, let's, do you really not drink? Are you serious you don't watch porn with your wife? Are you serious you don't do this? You say, no, dear God, no, I don't. Are you serious you don't do that? Are you serious? Come on. And we just, you don't watch that? You should watch that. Just watch The Bachelor. It's great. Everyone's sleeping around and doing craziness. It's all the fantasies of your mind on TV that you can watch. They go unchecked, and now you can see that you weren't living up to them in your mind, and now you got a better idea on a TV screen. And guess what? No one's home. Kids are gone. Or you're not at church. You can take care of this at home. You can do this because guess what? No one knows. And you can hear a good message and get a, ah, and do nothing with it. You know. But then when, 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 when somebody starts to preach on the, the, what God says and gets a little intense and says, you know what? Let's, let's, let's be separate, separated. Let's, let's be anointed right? Set apart for the master's use. Then you might just leave. Drink my blood, eat my flesh. Are you going to go too? Like those kind of, you know, like, cause, cause it might, it might just challenge who you are. It might just challenge your, your repu, not only your reputation, but your image because your image is, is more in the, that of the idols of this world than it is in him. I mean, this is just, this is a straight talk from me to you, and really a lot of to me, more than to you, because I, I actually had went through, like, I don't know, know what, know what was going on, I think just going, 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 and just, I found myself in this place fighting discouragement, like severe discouragement, like to the point of, like all of a sudden, you know, like I'm like, I don't know what is going on, like right before Christmas, I didn't know what was going on, almost lost it. Just not knowing, discouraged, fear, fearful, just so fearful. I couldn't explain it. I, I'm like, I know what to do. I know. Okay. You know, I'm talking. I'm talking. Just like I found myself from from being discouraged to, to not production. Like I don't even know how to put one in front of the other. Like, but I get. I do. I can see it, but I can't. I can't say it. I can't describe it. I, I'm, I'm. I'm hopeless. I'm discouraged. Probably is never gonna happen. You should quit. It, it would be better if I just died. Have you ever been there? I'm telling you, this was a fight. Just all, all of a sudden, I said, hey, I need your help. Crying out to my wife. I need your help. You, you could, you know, and, and from that place, I'm like, I mean, I was having thoughts of lust. I was having thoughts of all kinds of crazy stuff. Crazy, left field, not left field. It's spiritual. Trying to take out me or my children and so on and so forth. And so we went through Christmas and we went through the New Year's and we just kind of hung, hung at the house, you know, and just kind of just put on, set the atmosphere, if you will, like closing the door on some things. Um, just and, and man, I just felt like, felt like, yeah, let up, you know, and then it's like come in, coming in, I'm reading the word, doing that. You know, getting ready. I'm like, I'm like so pumped up, so full, so ready. Rock and roll, hit it. You know, get Sunday. Then Monday comes, and then what happens? It, Tuesday, it's like you're like, oh, what's the heck? You know, like just you feel like you get hit hard again. 
So, okay, all right, you know, like, hey, you know, say the, you know. And anyway, went into the next Sunday, which was this last Sunday. And I'm just sharing my testimony, okay? And I know there's time constraints and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sorry. And I come into this Sunday, and man, man, God just, I just felt his presence, anointing, all of that. Changed the message, didn't go with anything it went to. And just like he was up there, just as I say all the time. And the Lord stood next to me and gave me the words to minister so that through me, his message would be fully proclaimed. Second Timothy 4, 17. God, I felt it. I, all of the high, woo. And then like, ah, like out of where, out of nowhere, that Sunday, when I was working on the floor, kind of by myself at a house, I just, just, what in the heck? And then it, and it's like I, it's like I pushed back, right? I, there was access, but there wasn't entry. And I, I say with by myself, I was with my kids, but like the thoughts of torment and depression and, and oppression and just discouragement, and I pushed back. And, and it, it didn't last long, maybe a couple of hours. It's like, oh yeah. And Monday came, and I felt like, God, oh, traction. It was like courage, production productivity like I'm like yeah you know and I, and I took authority I don't I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus you're not living here you're not I'm not giving you know and so I I'm, I stood up right I had been standing but I, I stood up again and I stood up again and I stood up again I'm not saying it was easy I'm not saying it wasn't a fight I'm not saying it was pretty and I'm not saying I didn't cuss more than once lose my temper or throw something for the first time in my life other than a hamburger at my wife years ago. <laughs> but, I, but I fought. And you know what I realized? I wrote down and I said, you know what? It, it's spiritual. Like it, It's spiritual. I was trying to figure out why and it's spiritual. And I wrote that down and she said, hey, I, I, I had this and I began to listen to it. I said, that's exactly right. And you know what? It's not just me that's affected by this. It's so many that are affected by this. And this is exactly the answer. This is exactly the answer. And put it back up, this verse. So he got Jehu. He said, you know, the crazy man. But listen what happened. He says, you know, the man and his babble. Next verse. And they said, we don't know. It's a lie. He said, they said, oh, that's a lie. Tell us now. We don't know what he said. Well, that's a lie. Tell us now. And here's what he did. He said, well, here's what he said. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you what the man of God said. I'm going to tell you what God told me. And you know what they did? They laid down their coats for him. He didn't believe it about himself. But when, when somebody else heard what God had said, not just, oh, you don't know. Listen, it changed their view of him, and it changed his view of himself. Because somebody else said, what did, no, tell me what God said. Tell me what, he, what did the crazy man say? Oh, you know, he just said, well, he said, well, I've anointed you king over Israel. And they said, I see the anointing. Like, I sense the presence of God. I sent that, and they laid their coats down, next verse. They laid their garments and put it on him on the top of the steps. And they blew the trumpet saying, Je Jehu is king. Guys, there are pictures in your heart. There are things that you've seen. There are things that God has designed you for. But it's going to take you and me doing a couple things. Number one, allowing the oil to flow through you. What I mean by that is the Holy Spirit. And not be so boxed in. Unflask the oil dump it upon your life let the Holy Spirit rest upon you as it did Jesus to be a witness like you should look oily we should look covered with the Spirit of God that when the things are impossible the Spirit of God is with us and we come into that situation boldly and to defeat the very thing that has never been defeated before and Jehu rode up to the palace freshly anointed and he said, hey, these, these eunuchs had been with, for a long time, with Jezebel and King Ahab, and it set people free. We're talking under their reign and, and in the, in the, in that, under that spirit for so long. And he said, hey, who's with me? Who's with 
me. Hey, Jesus is Lord. This is what God says. This is what God says. And let the oil rain. And, and, and I know time and all that kind of stuff. It is 830. Um, but what I had seen in my heart, and we're, I don't know that we have time to do it right now. And so we're going to do it sometime. But this is why I feel like even just the Lord just talking about the altar and the altar of our hearts. But um, it, I'll tell you this. We are going to do this. We're going to dismiss. Um, but if you have been struggling with fear, depression, discouragement, or lust, and I just seen this. I said the Bible talks about how the anointing um, would, would, would set the captive free, right? We can know the truth, but or the anointing would free the yoke, break the yoke, and, or the separation. And Isaiah says it would break the yoke. And you've been bound and you don't know how to fight. We're just, I just saw this in my heart. We're just going to anoint you with oil tonight. You don't, um, and, and we're going to dismiss so you can get your kids. And if you are here and you're like, I got to get home to school because school is more important and, and all that kind of stuff. And I don't mean that as a bad thing. I'm saying, I am not going to go out without doing what it was in my heart because that is also the same thing. It's a manipulative spirit, which would be, you guys are afraid, or I'm afraid of who because kids, school, yet it's the same thing. We got a daggum basketball game, and it's 9 o'clock, and we're out there on a daggum weeknight, and it's four or five nights a week. We're at school, and we're out there late, and we're going to a ball game. We're running all over God's creation for a daggum basketball, and the very thing, it's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and what would actually free our life, and we're looking at the clock the whole time, and if it goes into overtime, instead of being excited that it's God's another part of the game that's good and I can't, could you see that game? We're like, dear God, would he shut up? And we shut out the very thing, the anointing that would set us free and set our children free and allow the children that Jezebel's trying to produce in our lives to destroy our children. It would kill them, but instead we go. Like if it goes into overtime, if you're praying for your pastor and whoever God would put it and you find out that God set you in a church and you say, God, go over time. If not for me, for someone today. Today I pray on Sunday morning, go over time. Do something in our midst that's indescribable you. And when somebody hears about it, they bow and throw their garments down, everything else off, and say, God. And then I just pray that we would come in the spirit of Elijah. And that the blind would see and the deaf would hear and the lame would walk because we serve a great God. We serve a great God, and we shouldn't be bound. We can't be bound anymore. Because you are the ones that God has sent to do what? To set the captive free, to preach recovery of sight to the blind, to proclaim this is God's year of favor. Favor is here because Jesus paid the price. So God's favor is all upon you. And that's what we're going to do before we're going to close and dismiss and we're going to dismiss if you got to go I just don't want you to, to hold you I understand I, I totally I'm, it's not a condemnation thing but I'm not quitting yet I'm not stopping yet because I know that there's some people that are here you didn't even know you were coming for this tonight but God knew you'd be here and somebody was fighting for you the same way he was somebody was fighting for me because it is prayers it is prayers that, that are being, listen, there are people that have prayed for you that you and I have known nothing about because God's faithful. Because he knew, he knew that he, he wasn't going to allow you to enter something that you couldn't come out of. He said, I won't allow them to be tempted beyond what they're able. I will not allow them. That's why you're here. So if you're here tonight, and, and Pastor Evan and I had, had seen this in our hearts, if you're here tonight, Maybe it's just something that you need to just go to the altar of your heart and say, God, honest, honestly, Lord, I'm struggling with pornography or addiction. Or, the, or you, maybe it's in the embryonic stage, depression and fear and discouragement. And you got to just be honest. Maybe you got to do that. But if you, if you know, if you know you've been battling what, the, what we're talking about here. And you 
want just to say, you know what, partner with me, Holy Spirit. I'm today, I'm making a, a declaration, anoint me, separate me, I'm destroying that, I'm going to that, and I say, no more, not in my house, not in my children, not, then we just want to, to take a moment and, and anoint you with oil before you go, um, and it, it, it is scriptural. I don't understand 99% of what's in that book, but I believe it. I see it and I see when I'm a doer of the word I see what he says and so even the Bible talks about how the prayer of faith would heal the sick or the prayer of faith or something about the prayer of faith you know what a prayer of faith is a prayer of faith is praying what God has asked you to pray prayer of faith is doing what do, acting by faith is doing what God has told you to do did you know all of this book is God's words but all of that book doesn't contain all of God's words because there's a lot of God's words that will tell you about don't take that contract or they'll tell you, hey, that's not the girl. Or they'll tell you, hey, you should be marrying somebody else. Or I'm not talking to you, an individual. All of you guys, okay? But they'll tell you, hey, don't go to school there. They'll tell you, hey, hold up, don't buy that car. Because I don't see anything about not buying that F-150 and instead of get that Toyota. But I'm telling you, the Holy God is speaking all the time. And he'll speak things to your heart, and, he'll, and you can walk by faith if you'll listen to what he says. And instead of leaning back to our understanding after it comes, walk by it. And this is why I'm doing this tonight. We're anointing with oil, and I don't care what it looks like or what you think or anything like that. We're going to do it, and you're going to be set free. We're partnering with you. God's partnering with you. And we're we're, we're, <laughs> we're going to be liberal with it, you know, not, you know, not like that liberal. But just a space of grace. A space of grace. Listen, there is a space of grace. I've been getting away with it. You're in the space of grace. When you read the word, what does he say? And so um, if, you, if that's you, you've been fighting any of these things, you want to say something?